Hi. Um, today's devotion is taken from the book of uh, Acts, chapter number 4 and verse 24. The Bible said, And when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is. So the title of the devotion that I'm going to bring forth to you today is Lord, Thou Art God. So we are going to uh, see the attributes of God uh, in times of this uh, pandemic. So before we continue, so let's have a word of prayer. Precious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the grace and mercy that you've given to us. Truly indeed, that you are the God who created the heaven and the earth. You are the powerful, the potentate, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. We thank you so much, Lord God, that understanding that despite of the present condition that we have, you are still in control because you are a sovereign God. We bring back all the honor and glory unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, so, brethren, friends uh, who are watching this uh, um, video and with this devotion, we are in the midst of this called the uh, COVID-19 or this pandemic and for us as Christian um, we must act accordingly we are not instructed to react but to act accordingly so one of the example that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us how to act is uh, uh, also seen in the book of Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 39 the Bible said but I say unto you that ye resist not evil but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him to other also. So normally, when someone hit us on the cheek or hurt us, our response is to do the same thing. Maybe we just slap them when they slap us. When they hurt us, we have to hurt us. So that is the normal reaction of people. But we are taught that we should not react. But Jesus Christ taught us how to act accordingly so his children are taught how to act accordingly so in our main text in the book of acts chapter number four the narrative is where the two leaders of the early church and that is peter and john uh, they are told to stop speaking or teaching on the name of the lord jesus christ so this came in the wake of a miraculous healing and followed by a powerful sermon brought by the apostle peter and there are several thousands of people uh, on that day uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they got saved and baptized. So our text reveals that when the church heard what the religious authorities had said, you know, what the religious authorities had said, uh, they lifted their voice in prayer. So that's the first thing that they do. They lifted up their voice in prayer. So friend, brother and sister in the Lord today, we are experiencing many trials and testings. We are experiencing troubles in life. But you know what? Most of the time when we are down, we have problems, we just resorted to find a way for us to be comforted or something that uh, will uh, lift up our spirit. But you know what? The Bible, this book, this book is uh, when we read this book, there are a lot, lots of them. There are many encouraging message and there are many promises that written in this book so today when we are locked down in our houses there are many things that we can do i suggest that when we have experienced some problems why we just go and read our bible meditate it and be encouraged by the word of god i believe like i said there are many promises that is written in this book that most of the time we do not know because we don't read it but when we read it and take it by faith i tell you the blessing will pour out upon you and you can see we can experience we can experience those promises that's given to us by our god the lord jesus christ himself so again like i said our uh, text reveals that when the church heard what the religious authorities had said they they started to pray so they didn't go to the street and, you know, they're making some noise. No, they started some rally uh, against the government. Why you should stop us? We should go to the church and doing something. No, that is what not they, that is not uh, 
uh, what they did. You know, in Singapore, here in Singapore, uh, when the government declared the circuit breaker, circuit breaker is also almost identical to those words just now that called lockdown. Okay? So many people are afraid. Many Singaporeans, uh, foreigners who are living in Singapore are confused. Some of them are confused. Some of them are afraid uh, of what is going on and what's going to happen. But for us as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have something that is uh, significant to do. And that is to spend much time, spend much time on our knees and humbling ourselves before God to deliver us from this virus that is contagious, contaminating, and this virus is no respecter of person. Either you are a uh, high official, high-ranking official, or maybe you are, uh, you are uh, just a... Uh, someone who is uh, sweeping the floor. No, I'm not saying that um, sweeping the floor is not bad, but what I'm saying is no matter what position or condition that we have, when we experience uh, this virus is no respecter, no respecter of person. So for you and me, my beloved brethren, there is something that we need to do, that is to uh, start by prayer. So there are three things that we're going to learn uh, with this devotion. First is that what they did, what we saw in this text is here. The very first word of the prayer, about their prayer, indicated who they believed the real authority to be. So who they believed the real authority to be in their life. In your life, who will be the real authority? Who has the authority in your life? Is it you, the government, your boss, your company, or God? So here, the first word of their prayer uh, in Greek is this protest that stated simply as Lord where we get our English uh, word despot from. So the word they use is speak of an absolute ruler when say Lord. So the early believers were threatened because of their faith and practice of serving and worshipping the true and living God. Yet, despite of the persecution they received from the hands of the Jewish leaders, what these disciples did, they continued preaching that Jesus had died for all and paid the, ra the ransom of our sin. Uh, rather than asking for deliverance from death, they didn't ask for this. It, it reveals their prayer in verse 29. The Bible said uh, in Acts chapter 4 and uh, verse uh, 29, it says, And now, Lord, behold, they're threatening us. So the religious leaders are threatening the, 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 the apostles because of what they're doing, because of preaching the word of God preaching the name of Jesus. So they are threatening, which means uh, they are threatening to be in prison and of course, um, worse than that, not just be in prison, but also to be killed when they continue preaching the word of God. So their prayer reveals what is in their heart. And what is in their heart in verse 29, they say, they pray that the Lord grant unto them, unto the servants. So they look for themselves, they find that they are the servant of the Lord. And they know the will of the Lord for every servant is just to go and preach the gospel to every creature. So they ask what they ask for the Lord. They didn't ask for protection. They didn't ask for some power. But what did they ask? They asked with all boldness that they may speak the word of God. So this must be the prayer for every believer like you and me. That we must ask for boldness to preach the word of God, to preach uh, the word of God. So that is what their prayer. So today, we are not allowed to gather together in order to flatten the spike or to avoid the spreading of the virus. So the government uh, advised every people here in Singapore to remain at home. And most of the people, of course, uh, they will work from home or maybe home-based learning. And even now, our services, we are stay at home as uh, as well and we have these technologies we can use these technologies uh, some of them um, doing some live streaming in uh, Facebook uh, some of them in YouTube and some of them using Zoom so whatever uh, technologies that we are using we must be thankful because God has his own way to provide the means so that his word will always be preached amen so here the believers were threatened because of their faith so today we can't have the personal fellowship and we cannot uh, gather together to do the ministry and to do the work of the Lord that are uh, being entrusted to you and me. But you know what? There is something that it will give um, encouragement for you and me. Did you know that Apostle Paul is being locked down as well? He was being to put into prison. But that prison 
uh, cell is will not, is not does not stop the apostle Paul in doing the work of the Lord. Even though he's inside the prison cell, apostle Paul can still do many things. And in fact, his he wrote to this young Timothy and he encouraged young Timothy with this word. He say in Second Timothy chapter two verse nine. He say wherein I suffer trouble. See, serving the Lord is not just a walk in the park. Okay. Apostle Paul suffered trouble when he continuously preaching the word of God. He said, yet, he said, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. You see the word there? Even unto bonds. And he said, but the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. So, the Bible said the word of God is not bound. So, despite that we are locked up in our every houses, but take note, the word of God is not bound. Though we are apart from each other, but the word of God had the power to unite us in one heart, in one mind, one spirit in Christ Jesus. So again, God is always providing a means to deliver his word to his children and to the people who need him to be their savior. Secondly, uh, they were acknowledging the position that God had in their lives. So which was supreme. So they knew that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who is supreme in their life. Likewise, as Christians, we should acknowledge the power and position of our God. So the church, uh, the church act on their knees. Something is out of their control. You know, if there is something that is out of their control, they act accordingly. And that action starts with on their knees. Kneeling down before God and asking God to help them, to lead them, and direct them what is the right thing to do for them to do. So, they started in prayer. In our prayer, we must make His name hallowed when we pray. He is the potentate. God is the potentate. God is the master of all, the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. Friend, brother, and sister, when we pray... This must be our prayer. We should not focus on the problems that we have. Most of the time when we pray, we continuously focus on the problem and we give everything to God that it seems like we ourselves, we are not uh, persuaded that God can able to help us with that prayer. When we pray, we must focus on the sovereignty of God. This must be our focus. Focus. On the sovereign God. When we say thou art. Thou art God. That means we acknowledge God. His position in our life. We acknowledge his position in our life. We acknowledge that he has made heaven. He is the one who created the earth. And the sea and all that is in them. When we say, Thou art God. And thirdly, as the early church began to pray, they used the word of God. In verses 25 and 26, uh, let me read to you. In Acts chapter 4, verses 25 and 26, this is direct quote in Psalms chapter number 2. It says, By whom, by the mouth of thy servant, David has said, Why did the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? Verse 26, the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. So here, we find direct quote from Psalms chapter number 2, just like I said. And then in verse number 27, the Bible said, For of truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Here we find that in verse 27, they rightly applied that Psalms, verses 25 and 26, they rightly applied that Psalms to the Holy Child, Jesus, the Messiah. So, and attempt, some people, these religious people, they attempted to kill him. And in verse 28, they said that they could look back to the awful tragedy of the cross and realize that it was actually a tremendous triumph of the providence and sovereign work of God. So remember, my beloved brethren, 
when we are in trouble and when we give that trouble to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will turn that trouble into triumph. The Lord will turn the trouble into triumph. No, the songwriter says, Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joy departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that will know. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. So what's bothering you today, my friend, my beloved brethren? If you are having some problems, whether your spiritual life today, physical, emotional, you have problem with your marital uh, situation, with your spouse, or maybe you have problem with your children, with your colleague, with your classmate, whatever it is, my friend, we must bring them everything to Jesus. Bring them kneeling down and offering these troubles at the feet of Jesus. So my beloved brethren, we must know that our first and most effective arsenal and effective uh, shield in our life is our prayer. Prayer, our communication. We must strengthen that communication with God. Today, we are locked down in our houses. We can spend much time in prayer. We can spend much time alone with God, praying together with our family members, together, my beloved brethren. So therefore, as we close this uh, devotion, short devotion, when we pray, I want to remind each and every one of us, we don't bring God down to our level when we pray. Instead, when we pray, we focus on His sovereignty. We focus on His power, position, and take heed that we are in line with His will. My friend, appreciating the boldness of these early believers, we must learn from that. We realize the value of prayer which focuses the sovereignty of God and who He is. So when we say, Lord, Thou art God, Lord, Thou art God, which means we are acknowledging who is the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God and Heavenly Father, Thou art God, O Lord. You are the one who is in authority. You are the one who is in control in my life. I offer everything unto you, Lord God. I pray, thee, dear God, that those people who are watching this short devotion may encourage them. And this, this message will bring peace and comfort unto them. And through this message, your name will always be honored and be glorified. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen and amen.